So, uh, so let me, I'll just play starting from intro and I ordered these so that they are in the order they are meant to be played and I'll just provide a voiceover live. Um, this is the demo video for what's called the Ripple Strobe Tank. It has a device that will provide the water waves and it has a strobe light. Oh, so a bit of a warning. There will be flashing lights from time to time. If it causes you um, uh, uncomfortableness, look away, <laughs> uh, seizure warning. Uh, this will be the view that you will be seeing most of the time. So I think I'm gonna put in a single point source soon and then turn it on. Yeah, so there's an attachment that will go on that um, stick that will provide us a point source of water waves. So you hear something vibrating. And if you look at the water very carefully, I think you can see it vibrating, but it's not a very good look. That's what the strobe light is for. But you can see that as I change the strobe light, so you can see the light blinking, but not much else. Maybe you can see it illuminating the water. I think, uh, yeah. And this is where the diffuser is for. So the light interacts with the water and now you can kind of see the waves a little bit better in the shadows. But um, unless I precisely match the frequency, the wave will be a kind of a jumble of mess. Now if I match the frequency, you can see that stable picture. You have to imagine the waves moving away from the point source. And this device has that sync setting to just uh, make it do that. Have the strobe light flash at the same frequency as the frequency of the wave to provide this stable picture. That's what I'll, I'll be using for the next demonstration. And you can see with the lower frequency, the wavelength is longer. And the camera is gonna go out of uh, focus from time to time. Um, yeah, sorry, I should have used the uh, uh, fixed uh, focus or something. Higher frequency, shorter wavelength. It has a limited range of um, where it works well. If the wavelength is too short, the picture just goes away. I'm about to switch to the two source. So I need to turn it off, remove the attachment for the point source, and I'll have the two source. Again, a bit of a uh, your warning. If the flashing lights are causing you discomfort, please look away. So this is two source. They will uh, shake in phase together um, uh, at the same frequency because the vibrating thing it's attached is the same thing. They both uh, shake at the same time. Again, in this view, you don't see anything. Now, once you have the diffuser, you see an interesting picture. So um, you see these lines where there seems to be no disturbance at all. Those are where you have destructive interference occurring. Um, so if you imagine having a screen at the end here, you will have, um, um, you will have kind of alternating pattern of large amount of uh, disturbance and no disturbance. Um, and you can see how with the changing frequency and wavelength, the angle at which these lines go change. At higher frequency, they are closer together. At lower frequency, they are actually farther apart. Uh, let me actually do a bit of a pause and show you here. I'm going to just to sketch out a little bit of a pattern so that um, we have something to compare to. So let's say I have this line here for a line of destructive interference and this line here for a line of destructive interference. And this is at relatively high frequency. Uh, I'm going to go back to when I had a lower frequency and have you compared how these two lines appear to the um, other line of destructive interference at lower frequency. Somewhere here or here. 
here. And all right, went back too far. So somewhere here. So it starts at high frequency. I'll lower the frequency and then bring it back up. See how these lines now deviate? It goes to the wider angle. As I increase the frequency, shorter wavelength, these lines narrow to where I traced it them up before. And then further. So that's a demonstration of uh, interference of waves in, um, in two-dimensional plane. It's uh, something that we get into more in Physics 4C. Uh, we'll use example of light waves uh, to see this interference pattern on a screen. Uh, this water waves is a good demo for just showing it in a um, in a general uh, wave setup that uh, light waves just show that the, the interference phenomenon isn't specific to light in 4c i guess this semester we don't really do light at all so this is something that will produce a source of plane waves um i think i want you to show uh this so that people have a mental image of a plane wave. So here again, you don't really see anything. Once I have the diffuser on, you will see that's plane wave. Very plain and um, boring almost to, to a point. Um, you can think of it as a one-dimensional wave in that um, only the interesting changes only happen in one dimension along the direction of propagation. Uh, and I guess without being explicit about it, um, what we are dealing with this semester for like standing waves, we are really dealing with a model of plane wave. If we had to describe a wave in three dimensional space. And uh, I think I want you to just show some reflection, maybe. Oh, I want you to show diffraction. The diffraction is a phenomenon of a wave going around a barrier. So this is a barrier. So it blocks the waves, and you can see how <laughs> once my hand moves out of the way, you can see how um, behind these, uh, this barrier, you can actually see the wave creeping back in. That's a, a phenomenon of diffraction. Now, it's a wavelength dependent. Longer wavelength diffract th uh, through a greater angle then shorter wavelength. So you can see how longer wavelengths are diffracting to here. As I go to higher frequencies, shorter wavelength, they are not diffracting quite as much. Uh, this is another thing we look at more in physics 4C, but not quite as much. Um, the kind of the wave diffraction phenomena is a super calculus heavy. And even though this is a, this and physics 4C is calculus based physics, there's a limit to how much calculus we can introduce. It's more of an upper division. Uh, and I'm not quite sure what I'm doing in this video for a minute and a half. Oh, uh, I don't know. It's uh, supposed to show uh, the phenomenon of refraction, but when I was trying it out, it didn't really work. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or... So what that plastic piece is supposed to do it's supposed to change wave speed. And when it changes wave speed, you should have seen like different wavelength from here to here. And with the different wavelengths, I think you are supposed to have seen the wave front bending, but I don't really see it. Maybe, I don't know. So I don't know what to make of it other than, hey, I had it, let me show it. Um, and, oh, maybe here now, at lower frequency, I think you are seeing refraction a little bit more. But even then, I, I think it's such a complicated uh, interaction with the reflected wave and refracted wave that it doesn't show very well. Uh, at least I didn't see any feature I could easily point to and say, oh, this is what I expected to see. So, um, so anyways, this is a demo. I got it a few years ago and I've been using it in my physics 4 C. Uh, for as the lecture demo, since I had it, I thought I'd enjoy it uh, as a fun kind of 
look ahead to what you might be seeing in physics for sure or you know, any other context where you have to deal with wave interference phenomenon that's tied to uh, path length difference that comes from different uh, paths that the different uh, waves from different sources have to travel.